This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for this program is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Amy Shannon, welcome to Local Color. And you almost got caught doing the robot. I was dancing. I love that theme music. I, I just get excited every time. Is I it know. really robot theme music? No, I, I, don't, I don't think I wasn't quite doing the robot. I was just, I was just you know what she was doing a little bit. It was just she, robotic. She was getting in the mood because later I'm going to have uh, Tarek from You Dig Academy on here. I That's was right. Juking. You were juking. I know she was juking. Did you see the bounce? Yeah, she was couch juking. I don't <laughs> couch juking. That's a new. That's a new thing. That's exactly what it was. I'm almost sorry I said that. Who do you have coming today? Gary Seekers from Prosevere going to talk to us about the hometown throwdown. The big two day throwdown. Absolutely, it's a festival happening in the New Daisy. All local bands. Um, some really exciting big acts uh, who we kind of haven't seen around here for a while, so it's well, going to be cool. Well, I can't wait to hear. Yeah. And now you've got, who do you have coming? Someone from uh, the Brooks? I'm Luis from Portugal, and he is a, a conservator at the uh, Memphis Brooks Museum of Art, and they are putting out a call to Memphis musicians to create original soundtracks for people to listen to while they are exploring the Nam June Pak video obelisk. Oh you my see, gosh, I could not love that more. I Isn't know, that, awesome? that, that is, is really so cool. cool. I can't wait to hear about that. Mm, there's, there's already one compilation done that was an invitation only compilation to sort of give people an idea and a ground for what they're looking for. Um, and so now they're looking specifically at locals. There's already some local people who've contributed, Jonathan Kirksey, Shelby Bryant. You know, there are a handful of locals that are already there. You can listen to it. Uh, there's a SoundCloud page. You can access it from the Brooks website. Oh, that's cool. Very, very nice. That that's cool. I love that. You know what I'm excited about? And I hope that you have something positive to say about this, Chris. Uh, probably not. I know. I know. I'm really expecting too much. But the <laughs> Harlem Globetrotters are coming. Nothing wrong with that. January the 12th at the Forum. And every year I tell my family, I would love to go see the Globetrotters. And every year, guess what I don't get? Tickets to go see the Globetrotters. Oh, my gosh. That, was a, that is it's such a childhood memory. It is. And the, the roster changes regularly enough to where I'm sure if I saw the Glo Harlem Globetrotters today, yeah, they would still. be nothing like the Harlem Globetrotters. But still. Because I grew up in the classic era, you know, Metal Arc Lemon, oh, Curly yeah, Neal. And, um, and when they would make frequent guest appearances on Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Scooby well, thanks, guys. I'm really looking forward to the interviews later. Um, coming up next, Elizabeth will be chatting with Gary Seegers from the band Prosevere. Gary, so glad that you could be here this week to talk about Absolutely. some exciting stuff that's going on with the New Daisy. I'm so pumped about this. The Hometown Throwdown happening next week, January 11th and 12th. Yes. Okay, so we've got some huge bands that are going to be here. Obviously, right. your band, Prosevere. Correct. But tell us who else is on the lineup. Uh, Serena the Fall is the headliner on Friday night. Um, we've got Swoon, This Tragic Day. There's a ton of bands. It's, let's see, 16 bands total. The biggest, of course, um, Brent from Shine Down is coming into town and he and Zach Very are cool. going to do an acoustic set. Oh my gosh. Um, so that's that'll be, be awesome. on, that'll be Saturday night. It's it's kind of a weird uh, logistics thing for them. He's flying in from LA that day. Oh wow. Uh, just to do this because he loves Memphis. That's awesome. So it works out pretty well. That's very cool. And I feel like the whole kind of motivation behind doing this was very much about yeah. bringing these bands back together, bringing these hometown shows back. I mean, talk a little bit about kind of where this idea came yeah. from. I I've been in the scene for 12 years now as a musician, and it's really, I want to say it's sad, but it's, I mean, it kind of is, the way that things used to be really huge. Yeah. And then now they've kind of teetered down. We don't have a, a rock station that really plays local music anymore. A rock one of three has kind of picked up. They uh, are, they're the doing Memphis some stuff Made. with Memphis Made, yeah. Um, you know, so it's picking back up, and this is just kind of a way to jump start it again. There's a lot of really good bands in town, and we couldn't fit them all on this bill, yeah. sadly. Um, but we want to kind of do this 
I guess two times a year, okay. maybe. Very Make cool. it a big deal and try and get more people to come out because there's a lot of areas of town that we don't really hit. You know, Prosevere is big on the ground and pound type of promotion where we yeah. take flyers out like this here. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're big on that. And we, there's a lot of bands that do Facebook promotion and whatnot, but we only hit a few areas of town. Yeah. There's other bands that hit West Memphis. There's, and Memphis is a really large place. Yeah. And we know that there's music fans out there. And without a local station that's really pushing the local music, it's tough to get out to all of them. Yeah. So if you've got 16 bands, or even if you've just got five bands or whatever, you can reach out to a ton of different places. And that's kind of what this is, is getting everybody back together again. Very cool. You know, where you're not working against each other, you're all working together for the Absolutely. same goal. Absolutely. And it's such a different thing, too, I feel like, because this is, I mean, a festival, really. This is two days of music over Friday Absolutely. and Saturday. I mean, there's just, we have, obviously, certain festivals in town every year, but there's nothing quite like this that's happened. No, this is all, and the difference between those and this is, this is built by us. Mm -hmm. You know, we are in the bands. We've all, we decided to get together and do this ourselves. So when I reached out to Cern of the Fall and I, and they just got signed, so it's, you know, they had to really work with us to make this thing work. Yeah. Um, so we reached out to them. We reached out to This Tragic Day who just back in December had, um, oh, what's it called? This Tragic Christmas. And they brought <laughs> International with them. And, uh, you know, they did over 200 something people. And, yeah. You know, it's, it, with a lot of these bands gaining momentum, it was difficult to get them to step down from headliner status. Mm -hmm to kind of all work together on the same thing. And I'm really happy about it. You know, I think everybody, we kind of checked our egos at the door. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, sometimes it's tough to do that, especially in your hometown, because I mean, like I said, these guys have given up headlining shows. Yeah, to make this work. To make this work, and hopefully it's successful. I feel like it will be. So especially bringing Brent in, that's a, that's a huge thing. That is huge. That's huge. So obviously we're going to have your Shinedown fans that are going to be there. They've oh, yeah. got their tickets already, I'm sure. But in terms of the person who's like, I don't really know a lot of these bands, but I want to come check it out, what should they expect? What kind of music should they expect? It's This is a rock festival, yeah. really, uh, because that's who we're already tight with. Yeah. We're already friends with them. Um, but there's a lot of different stuff. The bands that are opening on Friday and Saturday are different. Okay. I, I guess that's the best way to say it. Um, there's a band called Lights as Lenses, uh -huh. and this will be their debut show, and it's very cool. They're kind of folky, I guess, like Civil Wars type stuff. Okay. But then you move to um, Augustine is playing after them, and they're really, God, I don't even know how to describe them. Like they're garage rock. Yeah. You know, um, after that, A Moment Shy is really kind of screamo stuff. You know, and this is just on Saturday. On Friday, uh, Looking for Alaska and Tom Fuller oh, yeah. are kind of the pop punk indie, uh -huh. you know, Smith 7 bands, yeah. which it, I don't know if anybody knows what Smith 7 is, but yeah. um, Smith 7 was big when the skate park was over in Cordova. So lots of different yeah. stuff going it's on. Really, uh, it's really a big deal. It's going to be a yeah. mix. And where can we get our tickets? Uh, you can get them at newdaisy.com or Amazing. I believe replays. Um, my gosh, where all is it? Spin Street? Spin Street, probably. New Daisy box yeah. office. You can call the Daisy. I think it's 525-8981. Okay. Sounds and right. Check out newdaisy.com for any questions. Thank or you. MemphisHometownThrowdown.tk. Oh, all right. Absolutely. Absolutely with that URL. Thank you so much, Gary, for being Absolutely. here. Really appreciate it. We'll check out the Hometown Throwdown on January 11th and 12th. And we will be right back with a conversation about the upcoming performance by the U Dig Dance Company. Eric, I'm so glad you could join me today. I am a big U Dig fan. Why, right, thank you. Thank <laughs> you for having me. Thank so, you. tell everybody a little bit about U Dig. Whoa. Um, a little bit. A <laughs> little bit, just a little. Um, here in 2005, I founded the company. Um, U Dig stands, is an acronym that stands for Universal Dance Interdisciplinary Guild. Um, we really started. Um, to impact in the educational system, MCS, private schools, and youth-based organizations. Uh, from there, we started to advocate for the culture 
uh, the entire Memphis Jook and culture that uh, is literally worldwide at this point. Okay, so, for people that don't know about Jookin, tell me a little bit about Jookin. Jookin. Uh, From your Memphis ears Jookin. to your ankles. Man, that's a, that's a, with the bounce. <clears throat> well, um, <laughs> you know, the, the bounce is, is truly what's significant about Memphis Jookin. Uh, we have um, to where we can modify it with different music, uh, all type, <clears throat> all genres of music, whether it be pop, classical music, um, rap, soul, and the list goes on. Um, and the strategic footwork. So you have both uh, elements that really, um, really, really makes a signature for Memphis Jookin. One is the strategic technique within the feet. Uh, two is the bounce, and uh, that, and, and and again with the fluidity, uh, the the musicality piece uh, is just as it's a, it's it's a, beautiful. It's 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 Memphis Jookin. It's and Memphis and it is Memphis, and I've already told you this, but mm -hmm. for everybody else, I want to share with them. It was a religious experience when you guys danced with the symphony and Al Capone at the Daisy. I mean, to me, it was it was Memphis in a high church. It was beautiful. I, I agree. I agree uh, with um, those cultures clashing together and, and making um, just a really a platform um, to, to, to birth. Now what we're um, now what we're developing is urban ballet uh, that transpired from that uh, Opus One, um, Al Capone. Um, it was a very powerful experience, one that brought all walks of life together out of the city and, and just made a huge impact. Well, for anybody that was there, it really was like a religious experience. It was wonderful. Yeah, now, mm -hmm. tell me about the uh, innovation Beethoven, Bernstein, and ballet that's coming up. Um, this is here um, January 12th. This is the 60th anniversary with the Memphis Symphony. Uh, we're in collaboration with Ballet Memphis, and we're producing some paramount choreography <laughs> um, that will... Uh, debut at the Cannon Center here on the 12th. And then um, the next day you're going to over the GPAC. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, we're taking it to both ends of the city. So, you know, we're welcoming everyone to come out and witness um, just something, just witness, 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 witness something yeah. very powerful on, yeah. on, on all arts. This is it's interdisciplinary, you know, and that's what we pride ourselves well, on. I, really I can't wait. I'm cultures. really excited. But now you dig is not just a troupe. You have the academy where you actually teach kids to dance, right? Yes, yes, yes. We have satellite lo uh, locations throughout the city where uh, the general public can take advantage of classes. Uh, we call this Memphis Urban Dance University. So there's a series of DVDs, and we also um, have taken the time out to document uh, our dance style and what Good. we call a jukin syllabus. Uh, so it's a comparative analysis with ballet and how Jukin works all together. So, yeah, any student can just take advantage of and that. And you know what I like? I like the fact that you not only teach people how to dance, but you promote a healthy lifestyle as well. Very much so. Very much so. Um, being proactive about health, um, it, it, it directly correlates with dance. It's physical education. You know, yeah. so, um, you know, we definitely have to make certain that not only body conditioning, um, certain disciplines and habits have to be there in order for one to master a dance. Um, so definitely health is, is imperative, is imperative. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that you're here. Please come back and see me. I'm so excited about your cross-cultural learning and I want to hear more about some of the programs that you're doing in the schools. Certainly. So thank you so much for coming. And thank you for having you're us. You're welcome. It's been a, been a pleasure. Museum of Art is trying to reach Memphis musicians, yes? Yes, that's correct. And composers. You don't necessarily have to be a musician. Not necessarily. Composer. Yeah, you can be whatever you want. And the reason for this is to create a soundtrack for the Nam June Pack video obelisk that greets people who come in the main entrance mm -hmm, of exactly. the Brooks Museum of Art. People will be able to get um, is it headphones, an iPod? What, what? We're working on that, but firstly, we just have a SoundCloud for mm -hmm. the Brooks Museum, and you can go to the web page 
a lot Brooks of Museum webpage, right. and you can get the, the music from there directly to the but sound the, count flight. The page idea then, is that you listen that, to the soundtrack. Yes, of course. And the, the, the soundtrack is playing, actually, it's playing at the Brooks Museum. And so, so far, there, there are already several submissions that are available, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there, there are some Memphis artists, but it's more of an international contingency. Yeah, we started as a, like a more intimate thing, so just 10 musicians that I know, or Andrea from the Brooks Museum, she right. said that this is the right person to start this project. So, But now the goal is to seek some specifically Memphis, Memphis. musicians and exactly. composers. So to put their sonic spin on mm -hmm. what this experience should be like. Okay, now that we've got the basics laid out, let's go back to the beginning. You are, uh, uh, you do art conservation yes. and are also a bit of a musician and music producer yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So give me the roots of where this, this project comes from. Well, I own a small record label in Portugal, Lisbon, supported by the city hall called Disco, mm -hmm. TH, because in Portuguese sounds like D, so sounds like Disco. And, uh, well, we released almost 65 records in less than 10 years, supported by the City Hall, obviously, because this is impossible. Right. <laughs> and, uh, well, I have this music, I'm a music lover, so when I came to, to Memphis, I realized, oh, I need to do something about the video bliss. This is a beautiful object, I love this, and let's take it to a to a different level. Like. Well, talk, let's talk about the obelisk. What is it about this video? Nam, Nam Jun Pak is the father of uh, video, video art. art. Exactly. And video art, so he was doing it in the, the 60s mm -hmm. when no uh, one else was doing it. I believe so. Yeah, he started the whole thing. Uh, I'm not a, a connoisseur about this work because it's so massive, it's so vast. Yeah. But I know he, he, he collaborated with a lot of people from Yoko Ono and all that generation from I see late 60s, I guess. Right. And he's really influent and he's, he started these objects with televisions and that's the, that's the, like the signature from right. and Jun, the, Nam Jun Pei. The piece that he made, that's our video obelisk, is the last major work that he made before he passed away. Yes, so yeah. it's, it's a very significant acquisition it for is. the Brooks Museum it is. of Art. It is, absolutely. And even though Pike himself was uh, trained in music, and many of his installations included music. This one is, and this one has musical notes all over it. Um, this one is silent. It, it is, it is. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know why, but it's an interesting question, it's an interesting question. Especially because we're talking about Memphis. Right. And everything is about music, but this one is silent. So it, this, was the, this was the right motto to create a soundtrack, I guess. Yeah, I've been listening to the, the pieces that have already been submitted and they're, um, they're all very sensual. They make you want to, you know, it's not music you just listen to, it's music that you feel. Mm -hmm. And there are only a few exceptions to that. Do you, do you have any sense for why that's the case? Uh, no, we just say to people, I say to people, to the musicians, to be creative, but to be, to take in consideration Memphis, mm -hmm. the, the, the music scene, the um, Just the quickly, way quickly that because Memphis... we will run out of time soon. Is there, um, is there a deadline? Is there a time that people need to submit uh, pieces by not or is this really, ongoing? Not really. Not, for now I have four tracks for the next big sessions mm -hmm. and when, when we reach like 10 we're going to release an, the second volume. You're going to release the second volume. That's fantastic. But, and the third one and so on and on. So. Well, thank you Luis. Thank you. My Coming up next we've got Ashley Dacus and she's going to visit with the head chef at the Kim and Wilson School of Hospitality. Today in the wine cellar of the Medallion Restaurant uh, here at the Holiday Inn at the University of Memphis. I didn't even know this room was here and you said that people can reserve this space for special occasions, is that right? Yes, special yes, we do a lot of beautiful stuff like table cooking, uh, table side cooking and that stuff, especially for the Valentine's. And you've won all kinds of accolades for the work that you've done uh, here. Yes, uh, mm, we, mm, we are a little bit different at Holiday Inn over here, we kind of model to the others. And uh, uh, every year we, we win the Bertolt Award and also the uh, uh, two, three years ago, I win all three best food and beverage awards. Oh. So it was very nice, you know. Then also, uh, 
I am the president of the local chef association. And uh, 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 we got a monthly meetings. We do a lot of uh, uh, charity function. And uh, in my hotel, we always do the child advocacy center uh, function, which is the great, does the, uh, does the high class gala. Now that's the event with celebrity servers that you were talking about. Yeah, celebrity servers, and that's celebrity servers, and maybe Mayor, and uh, you know, uh -huh. Fred Smith, and uh, you know, we do a lot of beautiful stuff over here with that function. And uh, we're getting, uh, in that function, there's a lot of students involved mm -hmm. uh, from Southwest Community College and uh, uh, our school and uh, Lake Cole, and you know, so it's, it's a great kind of exposure, hands on for the students. So you are not a professor here at the University of Memphis, but you do periodically lecture on the business side of food and beverage. Uh, right? Yes, uh, I got a tremendous experience, and uh, also uh, I had the classes in uh, Lake Cole, Ice Carver's classes. And just over your shoulder there is the salt sculpture that you did. That is the salt sculpture, which I love to do that. Uh, I love to uh, always. I love to, I love to challenge myself. Uh -huh. uh, you know the ice carving stay maybe a couple hours. Mm -hmm. uh, the other the centerpieces like chocolate and anything else, just a short time. This is the probably about three years old. And uh, can stay forever, as long as the climate uh, dry, you know. And also I'm very much surprised uh, uh, in Memphis, we got a big Polish community. And uh, um, I was in Chicago, I was in New York, and I wasn't being surprised about that but I was surprised when, when they find me over here. So we got a nice people uh, working, uh, making sure that Polish community stays together and is active. Now I've asked you before if you plan to retire and stay in Memphis, but you said you already are retired. This is what retirement looks like for you. Uh, yeah, there is a retirement. I'm retired already, uh, but uh, I cannot live without work. What <laughs> I, can, I mean, you know, that's my passion. I need to, I need to work. You do wonderful work. I've yes. been so impressed with everything you do to stay busy. Uh, yeah, and if, if you want to look at my work, you can go to my website. Okay, uh, and w the website is? Yeah, www.chefedward.com. That's wonderful. You can see a lot of stuff over there, and also, um, that's my passion. That's what I want to do. I, I can probably not stay home. I just got to be uh, with the people, and I just got to be uh, do some stuff and take the challenge. And uh, just a few, few years ago, my wife passed away, which uh, uh, that is another challenge for me uh, because uh, uh, you feel kind of half empty. Mm -hmm. And when you take an uh, incredible challenge, impossible job, then uh, you fulfill your emptiness, you know. And, uh, it's a fascinating story, and people can find out more about you and your history through your book. That is on the on the line. Uh -huh. in, if you go to my website, you can you can, uh, uh, I mean, you can follow up the how you can get that book, and also what I mean the book I wrote because my mom, I mean, we had a, uh, my family uh, had a very uh, kind of a full hi historical life. Uh, for example, my mom, as a young girl, she was uh, uh, sent to the uh, Linz, Austria, uh, as a forced labor working on a farm. Uh, then, yeah, then later on, uh, all this uh, process will happen over there. Then, when she come back to the Poland, and then uh, you know all this uh, communist party and propaganda and that stuff. And then my career, when I start old-fashioned uh, uh, culinary institute, which is more. Um, uh, a lot more difficult than these days, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then uh, when, I come, when I come to the United States, and uh, coming to the United States also without knowing the English, <laughs> it's a lot of funny, <laughs> funny stories about that in the, in the book, uh, because you make uh, some kind of simple mistake, which basically uh, uh, lack of language uh, lets you do that. Well, the language barrier from when you first arrived in the U.S. certainly hasn't stopped you from succeeding so much here. So thank you for sitting down and talking today. Thank you so much.
Thanks, guys. I'm so glad you came today. And I totally forgot since Ashley got to do a remote with uh, Chef, how do you say his last name? Nowakowski, Chef Edward Nowakowski from the uh, Wilson School at University of Memphis. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to go there and have some lunch one day. Absolutely. I actually went to a, um, a little lunch in there, and the, the stuff have, was really good. They have good food. Absolutely. They do have good food. That would be a cool program to Their enter, Their brunches it? every year at, you know, special holidays and stuff are always the deal. Like yeah. Like the thing to go to. Yeah. Have you ever been? Mm-mm. Well, we should take nope, Chris. This, is, this has been off my radar completely. Oh, no, we should take Chris. Stuff. And, and I think I know all the, the nuances, the ins and outs of the... Uh, the, the foodie stuff in well, town. Well, it's really cool because the new and up-and-coming chefs that are actually going to school are being taught by this world-renowned chef, and they serve you lunch right then, right there at the uh, Holiday Inn. Or it's, at it is on my short list of, <laughs> of things to do. Well, and then also uh, ProSevere and the two-day hometown throwdown. That's right, January 11th and 12th. That's going to be fun. Do not miss it at com. That's going to be fun. And uh, did you see Elizabeth perk up? She's going to want to know about the Brooks. Oh yeah, yeah. That's really cool. How long is the program? Oh, it's there's. They don't have a, it's a, not a, a deadline. Time. You know what their goal is to just collect, um, to collect entries and then to create comp uh, compilations. So when you go to see the sculpture, you can have your choice of you know of I want to experience this to something um, floaty and ambient or something harsh and grating. Well, and here's the thing, uh, you know, January the 12th is like the busiest of busy because that's when the innovation is where you dig is dancing as well. Thank you guys so much for yeah. coming. What do you have? Are you going to come back and see us again? I feel like Absolutely. I haven't seen you in forever. Very soon. 2013 is going to be a big year for music. I will be back. Thank you guys. I'm Thanks done. for joining us. You are not. <laughs> You'll I'm be finished. here next week. Don't let him, don't let him kid you. Thanks for joining us. You guys come back and enjoy your local color.